I wanted to talk about a place that has a, a very negative connotation these days, seen by some as a cultural divide and a conflict zone. As an alternative, I will share with you how this area gave me a perspective on space, city, and the built environment. I was born in Tijuana and raised on both sides of the San Diego-Tijuana border. Uh, growing, up at the board, uh, growing up, the border weight seemed just like a traffic jam to me. It really didn't make much of a difference. I learned to love both cities and uh, live a true uh, bicultural experience. So uh, brief history of the area. <clears throat> After the Mexican-American War in the mid-1800s, uh, the U.S. wanted the natural port of San Diego to stay in the U.S. So two nautical miles south of that port, they just threw a straight line across to, all the way to the Colorado River. So at the time, San Diego was San Diego. Tijuana was just a bunch of ranches. So Krusty wasn't that far off when he said Tijuana was the happiest place on earth. It was literally built out of US prohibition laws. So in the early 1900s, you know, bars, uh, resorts, and the biggest purse on the West Coast for a racetrack was in Tijuana, home of the Caesar salad. Uh, so at the same time, um, Southern California, well, you might not think about it, but there's a strong codependence between San Diego and Tijuana, roughly the same population, one and a half million people. 50,000 people cross every day to work and study in the US and then come back the same day. So it's, it makes it the busiest land border in the Western Hemisphere. Also, Southern California is, is known for its expensive suburban expansion, and while well, Tijuana is known for shanty towns and scarcity. Well, the reality omits that the urban scarcity in San Diego and the resourcefulness in Tijuana, there's some reproduction on both sides where many track homes in the US, I mean in Tijuana, and then uh, informality in San Diego. The story of informal housing, you know, after the economic boom in the, in the 90s led to a boom in informal settlements in Tijuana on the outskirts, uh, approximately four, four acres a day at some point. So in Mexico, after five years, if you can prove you lived in, in a property, you can stay there. So I documented this, this uh, during my studies uh, where you, you see these constructions out of scarce materials and then you um, build as you grow, right? So th there's a story here of personal growth, family growth, and city. While studying architecture in San Diego, um, uh, I, I just dedicated myself to really understand these conditions from the people all the way to the materials and proposing uh, how the city is built backwards from the house then the infrastructure, right? So this led me to my first job in architecture was in a firm that dedicated to similar things where um, um, we partnered up with a, with a pallet rack company that was in Tijuana and creating a scaffolding for um, informal settlements. Tijuana is also a hotbed for the arts. There, is a, there used to be an event every couple of years. It's a bi-national uh, arts program, a public art. And uh, this is a friend of mine, Marcos, made a, right on the borderline a, a Trojan horse with two heads and an empty belly. We were commissioned to do a uh, Info site, which is the information booth library of the space. We, we put it on two truck beds and a framing of a home that was going to be transported to Tijuana after the, the event was over. So um, this event um, culminated in 2005 with a procession by a video artist Javier Telles and uh, the human cannonball over the, the Tijuana border, the Tijuana San Diego border. That's me right in the middle there. It was on ESPN that day, so it was a big deal. <clears throat> so I don't know how I lucked out, but I also partnered with the MIT. A friend of mine was in MIT, and they, they were part of the Media Lab. And they had a program where it was based off, if you see something, say something, based after 9-11. And it was about you know, writing people out. <laughs> but it, in, in, in their case, they mapped out acts of good deeds, acts of kindness. So I was in charge of the San Diego Tijuana border. In grad school, I also, uh, in, in UCLA, I actually took a case study on the border side, on the US side, uh, mapping out informal housing, uh, granny flats, and, and legalizing them in a way. Right now it's picking up steam, but it's a way to 
combat gentrification and keep people in their homes. I taught in design studios. So the, the case study of the border was great, right? Um, it helped me develop the story, kind of give people a perspective and uh, taking them out of their comfort zone. Guess which are my students in that middle picture there? So that led me here, physically here, to this building. I was invited to be part of the architecture team here at Warehouse. So now we know how I got a spot in your creation. <laughs> so I jumped at the opportunity, uh, not only because of uh, getting out of my comfort zone and a, built, and a new place that I'm not familiar with, but also doing architecture formally, not goofing off the way I was before. So landing here, you know, I was encountered with these, these landmarks, right? These huge vestiges of, of the past with amazing craft. Everything was alien to me, not only the, the building type, but everything where I'm from was temporary and new. In San Diego, if, if you're altering a building be, built before 1965, it goes through historic review. So I have been part, in some ways, of, of dealing with these buildings in New York, right? Uh, altering and, and giving them a new life, like the steam plant, the York Historic Center that hopefully is coming, Jonathan, right? Um, so in conclusion, I guess I, I really, my experience has helped me see the city in a new way, any city for that matter, and it's alterations that give me kind of like this hope in people and how you interact, and it really as architects and urbanists, we should take that in consideration and not just do the formality of it, I think our profession allows for that to happen. So thank you very much.